Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from My Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today I wanted to show you a really cool ship that I designed for Colony Wars. Sadly, it didn't quite make the cut. There was a few things about it that just prevented me from wanting to build it. Now here in front of us, we have something extremely deadly. We have an upgraded micro hive. So here in the center is the ship that you're used to seeing as our main refinery and building type vessel. And I thought, why not weaponize the damn thing? So at the front, we have 16 mag coils. Above it, we have another 16 mag coils that makes for some serious firepower. You're probably wondering how this fits into the drone sort of doctrine. Then it's quite easy. Basically, the rest of the smaller ship, the jump drive fleet, bounce around, distracting the enemy. This sits at a long range, takes its two shots, uses its jump drive, and gets the hell out of there. Takes its two shots again, and rinse and repeat. So let's have a look around the exterior. So first off, right at the nose of each one of these tips, you'll see a little camera. Now, there is redundant camera systems, as well as redundant way of aims, sort of aiming this thing. So you can see as we work our way along the side, each one of these mag coils has been staggered. And it's been staggered like this for a reason to take advantage of how Space Engineers renders damage when shots are impacting onto it. Each one of these shots will hit at a staggered motion, allowing for some very deep armored penetration that I'll show you here shortly. Now here in the center, we have the hive. Not much has really changed on the hive apart from the inside, I've added a few additions. And then we have the tentacle light structure that goes up the back. So if we come around here, we actually have a docking bay for a total of 24 Mark I drones. The idea of this is you simply disconnect, or you set it to the timer block, you set up a location, and these 24 drones can then swarm to that particular location. Up above, we have two docking bays and a hangar. Now these docking bays, since the central ship is still a building vessel, I thought this would be cool and this would be helpful for people trying to build ships from this particular station when not in combat. So as we come right to the top deck here, we enter into the bridge. So we'll pop through this door, we pop through this one here, and we're here at the command deck. Here is my little seat and here's my character. So on the right, we've got various different terminals. Each one of these terminals can either be used to control weapons manually, that I don't recommend doing because it is a sniper ship, or control the little drones that drop out the back that I'm more partial to. We've got two access points here, and inside of these little tiny airlocks, we have a survival kit. So if you do get shot out or you're wandering around the ship, you can quickly get into it. You might be thinking, oh, Aaron, that's pretty weak from the back. Someone could break into there and cause some havoc to you. The idea of this ship is it's never going to be on a frontline sort of brawl in situations you've really not got that to worry about if you get up close with the enemy you're really using this ship quite wrong so let's drop down a deck so if we drop down a deck to this little one we enter into the reactor room so there's four reactors here there's also more reactors within the central hive itself we've got ourselves a small med bay and a backup battery department just in case everything else fails you, you never want to be without power so we'll head back up through the staircase here, seal that airlock behind us, and we'll drop down a level. So now we're on this level, this is more of the building level. We've got two little vents so Muffins drones can fly out quickly, access the connector and come back. There's also still all the connectors in the hive in the center that I'll show you in a minute. We've got access underneath the reactors for repairs and whatnot, as well as some basic building area. Very simple. Moving a little further down, we've got the drone area, self-explanatory really, and we've got access to the lower decks through here, as well as the jump drive storage room at the back. You see we've got the catwalks, they take you back up to the platform above. Now if we activate our legs, we're now entering into the central hive. The central hive has, of course, its lockdown shutters currently activated, but we can release them and this allows the possibility of having welding drones, other sorts of drones coming in and out of here, taking supplies from the refinery in the center and pushing systems out. Now what I'd like to remind you that I've totally forgotten is high ground help to build the actual bridge up there. Now coming down here, the wizard helps me out with some wicked little spotlights and some really cool frontal areas of the actual station slash ship itself. So you can see we've got ourselves these really nice disco slash industrial type lighting systems. And as we come through here, 
we're entered into another one of the docking bays that we can quickly seal up from here if we're under attack and we want to go into a combat mode. But my recommendations for this ship would just be jump it away. Now as we head into the beginning or the front of the ship, we've actually got the area where Wizard worked on. I'll turn off my lights and you get some really quite spooky, just shumpy in this area type vibe. And I've been informed by him that there is redundancy after redundancy in here. If one cow container with my coil rounds goes down, then you've got another. But well, these should stay intact because we're going to be engaging from an extremely long range. We've got an access hatch up here where you can cut away one of them blocks and get all the way through the system in case it's damaged. So we'll pop ourselves out here and we'll enter in through one of the landing pads. So there we go, we've navigated through the whole of that ship. So if we enter through the landing pad, we've got another one here that I think is pretty damn cool because if you dock here, you get this sort of overwhelming, overarching type weapons platform above you. You come down the stairs, enter in through here, and now we're actually in the central hive. One floor down, we have Hardman's engineering department. You can see he's actually left a to-do list on the board here. He's got to repair some connectors, add some steel plates to the production, and sort out some power issues. The typical problems but he has access to everything the hive had before as well as the hive jump drives that are tucked in there so he can do all his engineering tasks from this particular section really cool indeed but let's get on to what you want to see the firepower of this ship now we've gone through quite a few ways of aiming this ship we came up with a gravity concept that was pretty cool but I've not got that installed in this variant so we're just gonna have to kind of aim it by eye in the camera so ahead of us, very fittingly, we have ourselves some vengeance type ships. These are at six kilometers, so these are very, very far away targets. Um, let's just get to my spectator seat. We'll adjust the camera up like so, and I'll show you the first volley from this perspective. So we'll just launch a volley. I'm not going to aim this, so we can't really. Let's let's just try. Let's let's aim it a little bit. We'll aim it a little bit. So we'll just put the camera on the center of the vengeance let's move it up a tiny bit like so and then we'll just fire both like so so both of them rounds have gone towards the vengeance and i'm expecting some impacts yes we've got one in the lower section uh, we possibly could have missed with the other shot now let's actually have a look inside now the way this weapon works is it takes advantage of how the voxels are kind of rendered and this is why i kind of felt it wasn't really fair to use it um, because you can see there's no damage on the side that we actually shot at but if we go inside uh, ooh, there's there's some serious issues we have we have nothing in here this is just completely gutted whatever room it was before this ship has been absolutely torn to shreds by it and you can see the impacts have come out the other side now that was just the rear one i think the other shot impacted towards the back here as well so let's just have a look inside and once again it's been completed completely gutted but remember this is just a test ships won't be stationary like this other ships will be buzzing around them they'll be fighting or they'll be trying to make the the way towards you but my strategy would be with this fire that shot aim somewhere else with my gyroscopes relocate remember i've not got any thrusters aboard this thing and that's going to be a big problem if i come under attack so next up we have another vengeance over here now with this vengeance, it's actually facing towards us, so it's going to make the shots a little bit more difficult, so we could miss a few of these. So we'll get the camera set up again, and we'll try to track these shots into the target. So I'll find myself. I am all the way over here. Let's just make sure I'm aiming at the right one. Yes, I am. And we'll try to track these shots into the target for you guys. So we'll f just check the camera once again. Go back into this, check the camera on three about there should do it check the camera on four about there should do it aiming them guys in we'll go back to eight and we'll hit the fire button so fire and have we missed no we've impacted so there we go we we'll should see the same sort of effect where we don't see a lot of damage on the outside but it should have cut into the center cabin penetrating doing a lot of voxel interior damage and just ripping parts of shred as far as as far as it can penetrate possibly so it looks like most of these areas kind of been focused on here yeah you can see these corridors have been ripped up this area behind this section we'll get a second volley off at it uh, so we'll re-switch back to our cameras on three and four so three let's bring that camera a little bit further up and we'll fire that second volley at it so there we go second volley goes straight in Let's have a look at what damage we've done to the Port of Vengeance this time. 
So once again we fired through, gutted to a certain extent, but you can see we've not penetrated all the way to the back here. Because the penetration, even though we are using that voxel type situation, God I'm really confusing you here by not being upside down. You can see the sort of damage we've done to the interior. Not a load of damage to the exterior, once again, but we have done a lot of penetrary damage, damaging systems, stopping things from self-repairing, and just causing general absolute <laughs> carnage to the inside again. One good shot, and we could have won the battle with this guy. But anyway, like I said, nothing ever happens like it does in the simulations. Let's go back to this ship, and we'll show you its jump drives. So we fired our shots, we've released our volleys, whatever, we hit the jump drive. Now with the jump drive you always want to stay about seven kilometers away from the enemy target so none of their weapons can target you. Your biggest risk when you're aboard this particular ship is them manually controlling one of their mag coils to take you out. But if, you, if we're using the rest of the fleet to our advantage we should be able to continuously fire and jump. So we quickly lock onto the target, we get our jump drive counting down and then we're off again. So it's just a matter of manoeuvring around the target before they can spin the whole ship and take you out. So as you can see, we're back at another position around them. Their antennas will be showing up, making sure that we've got 5k jump enabled to each one of them. So that is the vessel. That is the tactic. And that's the damage it can cause. But another cool drone ship to add to the arsenal. Anyway, let's thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.